Tak moje jo. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mr. 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 about the answer to a question that I get asked quite a bit. And that question is, do you still use the S1? Do you still like it? Or did you just use it eight months ago because you got paid to make videos with it? The answer is the S1 is still my favorite time-lapse camera on the market and I use it all the time. Here's why. This camera has so many great shooting options for both photography and videography and many, many people have talked about that in the past. As you know, I'm a time-lapse photographer and that's how I review things. So let's just talk about the time-lapse modes. Now there's two time-lapse modes. There's time-lapse mode and there's stop-motion mode. Let's go over time-lapse mode first. So you can shoot a time-lapse in, you know, manual mode, static exposure, no changing exposure. It's like the most basic form of a time-lapse. Do that all the time when you want to shoot a cityscape or some clouds or just a normal landscape. That's fine. But then it gets more interesting when you go into the more advanced things. In A mode, aka aperture priority mode, you can enable exposure leveling and the camera will then adjust the settings for you because it knows that it's shooting a sunset or a sunrise. It knows that the light is changing and it knows that if it changes the settings by one third of a stop, which is what pretty much, not all, what a lot of other cameras do, if it changes by one third of a stop, you'll get exposure flickering because you know your settings change and that's why LR time lapse exists and that's why there's so much post-processing involved with Holy Grails. What this camera does though is it adjusts the exposure minutely in very, very small ways. Such small ways actually spread out over time that you can't notice it straight out of camera. This is an entirely flicker-free, perfect Holy Grail shot and there's almost no editing involved whatsoever which is fantastic because you can just set the camera and forget it and it will shoot the most challenging time-lapse possible, a holy grail, that's why it's called a holy grail, fully automatically and I think that's just fantastic. The camera also allows you to choose when to start shooting so you can set up a specific time to start shooting. I did this on New Year's Eve in Sydney when I was at a party across the city. I had set up my camera to shoot the fireworks at midnight. Sadly, there was a lot of wind that night and the fireworks were delayed by 15 or 20 minutes. So by the time my shot had finished, that's when the fireworks started. So I got no footage of the fireworks this year. Very sad. Boo. The intervals it allows you to set goes from 1 second to 99 minutes and 59 seconds, which is extremely long, but maybe someone has a use for it. Or you can shoot with no interval at all, which is the same as just holding down your shutter button, which will fill up your buffer and your memory card eventually or like quite quickly. It's good to have if you need it. The maximum number of shots that you can set up is a four digit number. So 9,999 shots is the longest shot that you can shoot which would fill up most memory cards. That's just the time-lapse mode. Then there is also the stop-motion shooting mode. You can use this for hyperlapse photography where you want to reframe only minutely when you're walking through a scene because you click a photo and then when you shoot the next photo you'll have a soft, a soft, a see-through overlay of the previous shot which is obviously great for doing stop-motion where you've got a, you know, a lockdown scene and you're moving a little element minutely. Usually people use external software for this like Dragonframe but this is great to do it in camera and it, it allows so many people to experiment with this new style of shooting which might lead to so much cool art in the future so I really like that. When you're shooting stop motion it allows you to continue shooting in a previous folder so say you're working on one sequence you shoot something else but you want to go to that first sequence again you can select it to record the shots in that folder as opposed to in another folder it's small things, but it shows again that engineers have really thought about what to do in these menus and in this firmware to make it easier for you to use. You can also enable your stop motion mode to shoot by itself at an interval, which is pretty much time lapse mode. This is useful for example, slow moving stop motion stuff where you can't easily reach the trigger or you don't have a remote or something. It's pretty niche, but it's good to have it. Then there's some other things I really like. For example, the sheer overlay. This is incredibly useful for when you're hyperlapsing, where you need to have a reference frame from where you were previously to where you're going. I use this for a creative edit that I made for Lumix uh, months and months ago, where I was holding up some leaves and I used my hand or my thumb as a reference point to uh, do like a rotating leaf shot. So. It's very useful and I love that it's built in. The camera also has a completely silent shooting mode with an electronic shutter, which is great for when you're shooting indoors, for example. I'm currently experimenting with some macro time lapses. You may have seen those pass by. I started shooting those on a 60 Mark II because I, you know, film on the Lumix S1, which is what I'm using right now. But uh, the silent shutter on the Canon is still so loud and the S1 is completely silent. So that's very useful. It's also USB-C chargeable, so you can just keep shooting for as long as you want. I did an experiment in Sydney, my longest shot, and it only stopped shooting because my memory card was full, was 30 hours. 
Sadly, there were zero clouds visible in the shot. I think it's on screen right now. Yes, it is because I'm filming and editing this myself, of course. So yeah, no clouds, sadly, but still interesting to see the transitions from day to night go completely flawlessly. Flawless? Flawlessly? Anyway, doesn't matter. The camera also renders your time lapses in camera. So you can go to a folder from whatever sequence that you shot, then select it to render or export, you know, the photos into a video file. We call that rendering or exporting. And it allows you to do that at multiple different uh, resolutions and frame rates, not only for the finished video file, but also the playback frame rate which is fascinating. So you can have a 4K 25 frames per second video file, but the footage in there only plays back at whatever frame rate you want it. A lot of stop motion happens around 12 frames a second and it's useful to have that built in. You can also render stuff in reverse, which I'm not sure how you use that, but you have it. Thanks to the big pixels in this full frame camera, it's got amazing low light performance. I haven't tried it in Astro yet. I'd love to try that, but I just haven't had the opportunity yet. And it's got great dynamic range as well. It's got a semi-flip touch screen. I like that. It's better than a solid screen, like on my One DX Mark II, which isn't even a full touch screen. I wish it was completely flippable, like on the new EOS R5, but it's better than nothing. And then I really like the solid build and the weather sealing. This camera honestly feels like a tank and anyone that picks it up is like, whoa, that is a beefy one, which is also kind of a negative, but more on that later. All right, it's later. Let's talk about the things that I don't like. If you only use an SD card, which I do because I don't own a CF Express card, the camera tends to be quite slow to operate. I think this might be a buffer or whatever issue, but I just feel like it could be a little bit snappier. If you open up a Canon, things just work a little bit quicker compared to this one. But again, this might just be the memory card that I'm using. The battery life isn't amazing. It goes down quite quickly, but it is USB-C chargeable. So I've often just plugged in a, a phone battery bank or whatever you call it, or you can just plug it into the mains as well to keep shooting forever. As mentioned, it is bigger and bulkier than people expect, but that is actually quite good for a time-lapse camera because you want those to be solid. You don't want them to be super lightweight so that they vibrate or shake when there's a little bit of wind around. And then one final thing I really wish that was there is the possibility to review your shot while you're shooting a time-lapse using the built-in time-lapse modes. Now, the way to work around this is obviously use an external remote that you can just stop, hit play, and then start again once you've reviewed your histogram or your settings. An easy workaround, but something that I feel like could be added to the menus. Other stuff I really like about Lumix, they just keep adding functions. For example, high frame rate or slow motion video shooting mode at first was completely auto exposure, and now they've added it to a firmware update where you have manual control over your exposure, which it's just so nice to get super functional firmware upgrades. I've been using the Lumix Tether app on my computer actually right now I'm using that. I just plug a USB-C cable into my MacBook and I can monitor and download the footage straight to my computer while I'm shooting, which is great for fast turnaround projects. There's now a ton of lenses that you can choose from because it's the Elmand Alliance and many more things. I'd love to know what camera you are using to shoot time lapses on. If it's even a camera, you can shoot it on your phone as well, which is something that I've covered in the past. If you would like to know more about the basics of time-lapse photography, I've got a free ebook that you can download down below. You can support the channel and my website by checking out my paid ebooks or my Patreon page. And yeah, toss this video a like if you liked it, toss it a dislike if you hated it, definitely leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, blah blah blah, all that stuff at the end. Much appreciated, thanks for being here, and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye. Woo! Cool beans, hopefully that'll work. 13 minutes of recording, not bad at all. Using the Lumix Tether app, I can see what I'm doing and it's looking good. You're crazy. I'm crazy indeed.